Breast implant, ALCL, it's a topic that's been in the media a lot lately. You know, I think patients see this, there's been some seemingly maybe even alarming or misleading information that's out there. So Brian, like, what is breast implant ALCL and, and what, what do we know about it? Well, we're learning more. Most likely what we're going to discover is it's not actually a lymphoma, but it's very akin to a, a skin type of lymphoma that we have lots and lots of data about. What they have noticed is that in certain patients who've developed fluid accumulations around their implants that they have noticed these abnormal lymphocytes. In certain cases, and it's been very, very rare numbers across the world with the million, many millions of women who have breast implants, so there actually have been a very isolated number of deaths. I don't know about you, but when the patients come into my office, I like to tell them about the pros and cons of breast implants, and we need to have a discussion about ALCL, but it's a little bit misleading in the sense that the FDA called it a lymphoma, whereas most of us, I think, believe it's probably what we would call a lymphoproliferative disorder as opposed to a lymphoma. Because if you have lymphoma, to treat it, you need to have chemotherapy. And with a lymphoproliferative situation, we need to remove the implant and take out the capsule and you don't need chemotherapy. And it's been really associated with a certain type of breast implant, correct? That's right. There's to date been no cases of development of this condition in a woman who has only had a smooth implant. And in our office, we like to talk about capsular contracture, which can occur in maybe one to two percent of patients and other things like implant leak. And the lymphoma discussion kind of gets us off track from these things that are much more likely exactly. to happen compared to ALCL. And fortunately, our own Dr. Adams wrote a paper about really the risk of death from a breast implant, and the numbers are fascinating. If you look at the risk of dying from a breast implant, the micromort, it's 0.4. And here are some common things that we all do every day and the risk of dying from them. Skiing one day in the United States, two times. Drinking a half a liter of wine, two and a half times. Riding a bike for 17 miles, your risk of dying from that is two and a half times. And then finally, driving a car eight hours per day is 40 times the risk of dying compared to 0.4 for a breast implant. So I think that puts it into context and perspective. So Tracy, what I find really remarkable is that the day that the FDA released their latest update on ALCL is every major network covered that release. What they're not talking about is what this risk really represents in the day-to-day -day lives of our patients. So they should keep in perspective that having a breast implant, even a textured breast implant, is such a long-term non-issue when it comes to their lifespan and their health that they really need to look at that in the context of everything that they do on a normal daily basis without ever thinking about it. Well, those are some great insights, and if you want to see more of that, you can see it on the PlasticSurgeryChannel.com.